All right, the first law of thermodynamics. It is somewhat similar to the principle if you've taken economics of there's no such thing as a free lunch. So what that says is the total energy of the universe is constant. Or you've heard this before, energy is neither created nor destroyed but it may be transferred and that is what we're going to be doing for the rest of this chapter so you go okay well we've been i learned that energy can't be created or destroyed in you know sixth grade science class um well thermodynamics is a lot more complicated um so we're going to be doing some some math related to it and so while we're doing math that related that is related to it um it makes it con considerably more confusing. Now, the internal energy of a system, so that's going to be the energy within the system, is the sum of the kinetic, so that's energy of motion, and potential energies of all the particles within the system. So, I'm caffeinated, so this is my can of Coca-Cola. It's open right now, so that's a little bit different. But when it's closed, actually it doesn't matter. Um, this is the system, and the air around it, everything else, is the surroundings. So within my system, within the can of Coke, you know, you have the, the can. So the can's made of stuff. It's made of aluminum. And so the, this is solid, and so those particles are vibrating. So they have a little bit of kinetic energy. Um, you have the actual liquid, which is a fuel, so that's stored energy um, as far as the coke. And then you actually have gas particles, the carbonation, which is escaping, so that's also some form of kinetic energy. So all of that has to do with the can of coke, and all that added up together is the total internal energy of my system. So... It's really hard to measure that. So, and it's really hard to measure a lot of the quantities when we talk about things in thermodynamics. So we don't usually actually measure them directly. Uh, what we are gonna measure is the change, is how much it changes. Now, internal energy, someone decided, is a capital U. I don't know why. I could probably find out, but I don't like it enough. All right, so this says if the internal energy of the system is positive, then it has to come from the surroundings. So the system gains, the surroundings lose. So even though the surroundings is everything else, the surroundings also have an internal energy. So you have to know what's the system and what's the surroundings. So same thing's also true. If the system loses energy, then the surroundings gain the energy. So internal energy. Now this is probably the first time that you've heard of something called a state function. When we're talking about thermodynamics, we are going to deal with state functions. State functions are considered path independent. That means that it only depends on the state of the system at the time that you measure it. It does not matter how you get there. So in this little drawing here, all that matters is the people were at the bottom and the people were at the top. It doesn't matter if the red line, somebody took the direct path, or the blue line, they took the traverse and came up a longer way. That doesn't matter. The only difference is the change. How you get there doesn't matter. So path independent. So let's write that down. How you get there doesn't matter. And it doesn't, the, the time doesn't matter. The pathway doesn't matter. Uh, it's just the difference. So this is the change. That's what a state function is. That's what it means. 
So if you look at it from a more uh, chemistry oriented example, what you what we have and what we'll be um, talking about some are energy diagrams. So this represents the energy of the system, which would be our um, reaction. So here we have our reactants carbon plus O2 is going to make carbon dioxide. So here's our reaction. So our reactants, our carbon and our oxygen in our system, because this is the system here at this point, and then the system changes and becomes this. So the system has these reactants here at the beginning and they have a certain internal energy. Then the reaction goes forward and you have CO2 which gives the system an internal energy down here. Now there's several ways you can get there and if you're going into chemical engineering that's one of the things that you'll be doing is figuring out what is the most efficient way to get there. Um, but ultimately how you get there doesn't matter unless you're an engineer. So all that matters here is we went, we always go from reactants to products. So in this case, we went down. So when we go down, so down, a decrease in energy is negative. Now, when we're talking about in a chemical equation, suddenly they switch to delta E, delta E for energy. And I don't know why, I really don't. But so U and E, mean internal energy but so E stands for energy that's pretty easy to remember I think that's easier to remember than U all right so when we go down it's negative so it loses energy so here we have the surroundings gain the energy and the system loses energy because here the system loses so that means the surroundings have to gain and so that means your products have um, less. No, they have more. They have more energy than the reactants. So we would say energy is released by the system. If we reverse the process and make, if we go the other way, then the surroundings lose energy, the system gains it. In that case, your products, because these become the products, and these are the reactants, they have more energy than the reactants. So energy is absorbed by the system. So here it is. So here we're going from, this is a decomposition reaction. So we're going up. So energy is increasing, it's positive. So it has to come from the surroundings. So here, if the products have less energy than the reactants, then the system loses energy. When you lose energy, we call that negative. Negative in, in physics and in thermodynamics indicates direction. So that means energy is flowing out of the system. If we're talking about heat, generally heat would be released. But if, a, if the products have more energy, then we are gaining energy from the surroundings. So energy goes into the system. Again, it sounds straightforward and then you start thinking about it. 